Hey yeah, folks, Quill18 here, and welcome to some Age of Wonders 4 Primal Fury gameplay. Primal Fury is a new content pack that is dropping for Age of Wonders 4. Do check the description box down below for more information, and thank you very much to Paradox for sponsoring this video. Now, there's a bunch of new things that are coming out in both the expansion, Primal Fury, as well as the free patch, the wolf update that's coming out at the same time. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in here and just get a game started. And we'll, um, I'll probably fast forward for you through a few turns so we can highlight a few things that are going on. First of all, there is a new realm. That's what we're gonna be looking at uh, today here, the Storm Wreath realm. If we go and select that, we can see, I mean, it's got, you know, some of the normal traits, like in this case, it's got the island traits, so more islands. Uh, overgrown realm, more foresty area, lots of, like fey planty things. Um, we're gonna be playing kind of evil undead kind of person, so we're gonna have maybe an antagonistic relationship with the world. Uh, and this, the PF, you can see this is new to Primal Fury. We've got the Primal Dispute trait over here. This realm is the stage of a violent dispute between the Godier Serena and Nimu, whose primal followers fight a bloody conflict. So both of both Nimu and Serena will be in the game to start, um, and you will not be able to pick them. They will be two warring factions in the map, and one of the goals for this particular scenario is going to be to uh, potentially defeat both or maybe allying with one and defeating the other. Uh, we've got this low population is a classic trait over here. And then the hostile seas over here is another new trait with Primal Fury. Sea storms are a permanent feature of the world seas, making them exceptionally dangerous. Remember, we are also on an island map over here. So ocean provinces are affected by sea storm. Combat in these provinces are affected by the sea storm trait. We can see here all units are going to gain wet for three turns. Now, wet is interesting because it does lower both lightning and frost resistance. We're going to be taking advantage of that in our setup here. Also, up to three random units just take random lightning damage, and then we also have a chance of becoming electrified. So that's lots of fun. Um, and units in these provinces also get hostile seeds. Seas over here can't regenerate, take damage. You really don't want to spend much time in the water if you can. We'll leave everything as the default. That's going to be okay. And in terms of new leaders, we are going to be taking a look at Arvik the Dark. That's who we're going to be playing as today. We can't play as Serena because um, they're one of the NPC kind of factions in this particular one. are guaranteed to spawn, and they're part of the goal of the map. But yeah, we'll be playing as Arvik the Dark, and here's the thing. These two people, Serena and Nimu, that we're potentially going to want to side with one of them versus the other, uh, they are both nature lovers, so our general shadow affinity here isn't going to make them make uh, them like us very much. So what we may want to do when we pick some tomes, we might want to go and add in some extra nature affinity just to balance that out, depending on how you want to play diplomatically or not. Um, so one of the new things that we're going to be seeing here in the Primal Fury expansion is this primal culture here. So we're going to get some structures of food income and then it alter provinces into the primal animals favored terrain. What's the deal there? Well, if you take the primal culture, there are, I believe, seven different animals you can choose from. Arvik here starts with the glacial mammoth animal selected. Your people worship the glacial mammoth, bestowing benefits to your culture. We start in the Arctic, which would normally be quite bad, but we do have the ability to fill to build farms on snow terrain. Snow provinces are favorite terrain and get plus three production. Uh, we also, oops, I didn't mean to get rid of you there. Come back. Uh, we gain access to the primal mammoth summon and we can walk faster in Arctic terrain and we've got this glacial mammoth boon. All of our units over here, the ones that are blessed by glacial mammoth, we get this rising fury. So when we attack, we gain stacks of this. When it maxes out, it turns into fury of the glacial mammoth. So the, it, you get five stacks of that. And then those stacks go away as you continue to attack. So we're going to generate a bunch of extra frost damage uh, as a bonus, um, which I think we can build some combos around quite well. So we're going to pick Arvik here and I'm not going to make any changes to him. We'll do that. Although we could very quickly, if I go and if I were to just create a faction, there we go. We take a look at Lupine. Now, of course, these are the default traits for Lupine. Uh, you can always change these up if you want, but we've got Athletic, which increases the movement of the units dramatically. And the pack tactics here deal more damage to enemies surrounded by your units. And we've also got the Goatkin here. So you can see they've got the Herbivores. They can consume plants to heal themselves. So they gain Consume Flora ability for some self-heal by destroying Flora obstacles. Uh, and then they also start with Hardy and Tough. But Your journey. again, I'm going to play as Arvik the Dark here, the Risen Frostlings. We're going to select that faction. That's going to be groovy and cool. Oh, we got a little enemy encampment right next to our capital. 
I rig the dark. A new ruler emerges. Explore your surroundings and expand your domain. Prepare to face your rivals and become the master of this realm. Your choice will shape the new age wonders. So we start with the Tome of Necromancy. And one of the things that is in the Free Wolf update is a revamp of the necromancy system. One of the big things that we're going to see, um, thank you, we're gonna start with Necrotize and Ancestral Harmony. One of the things we're gonna see is a new spell you can research that gives you an overland buff. I don't know if I can quickly find it. Oh, they're very conveniently. Skeletal or skeleton reanimation is right here. After a battle, we will get a pop-up giving us the ability to spend souls to create skeletons after combat. And we get to pick and choose depending on what died in combat, We'll get to pick uh, skeletal battle mages, skeletal archers, skeletal warriors, uh, pikemen, etc., etc., etc. So we get to customize the skeleton experience that we've got through a menu, get a little bit more control over there. Uh, Necromancer has also been moved to this tier one tome, so uh, we can start unlocking the Necromancer right away. Uh, so a few little tweaks over there. I mean, some of the stuff is still going to be the same, certainly, because Necromancy was kind of fun in the first place, uh, but it looks like it's been made even more fun for or at least having more control over the, some of the effects uh if you're like me you do like playing the necromancy tomes so i think you'll get a lot of use out of this i wonder if it makes sense to research this immediately i mean until we get soul generation uh there's going to be a limit to how many of these skeletons we're going to be able to get on the other hand even just being able to pick up an extra couple of units from the skeletons early on could make a big difference for snowballing Necromantic magic's not bad. We do start with a couple of support units in our army, uh, and then we've got the chance of inflicting decay on the auto attack, which is a heck of a lot more blight damage, and then prevents the uh, the health regain, which can be pretty potent. The Necromancer, of course, also counts as a support unit, so they would benefit from Necromantic magic if we had that. Uh, we've also got the Raise Undead and the Strength and Undead. Now, not I don't think we're going to start with any actual undead units. I'll have to check what my army is set up as. So I don't know if the strength inside of it is going to matter that much. But on the other hand, having the raised dead is pretty nice. I'm kind of inclined to go and immediately start with a necromancer. And then as soon as this is done, building maybe just one for my initial army stack. Dang. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do skeletal reanimation right away. Tell you what, I'll take the necromantic magic, or necrotic magic, sorry, um, to at least buff my initial starting units. So we do have for these uh, couple of animus that we're going to start with. These are our current support units. And of course, all of our units do ride mammoths, which is fantastic. So we got that glacial mammoth boon that we were seeing earlier. These come with the juggernaut ability. Uh, and then, yeah, the animus themselves are powerful evo evokers. And we've got cold blood over here to reduce morale loss, which is great. These animus, yeah, healing the summon primal mammoth. I mean, I like anything that gives us extra units in combat, so that's pretty great. So what I'm going to do is we're going to start playing here. Um, I'm, I may skip ahead a little bit until we meet our neighbors and get the, the quest, the plot advancement for the game. Here we go. We got our first quest quite quickly for our animal spirit. You've led your risen frostlings, ardent followers of the glacial mammoth, to a new realm when something catches your eye. Not far from Sanholm, which is my capital, a wondrous tree pulsates with invigorating energy. Its strangely familiar energy inspires you, even from afar. A faint blare on the wind calls you to it. Your eyes fixed on the tree, you discern a faint apparition of immense power. Could it be? Is that the ancestral spirit of your risen frostlings, the glacial mammoth herself? Does the glacial mammoth, whom your people intimately call Loom Frost, truly grace this realm? You should visit the glacial mammoth den presently. So spirit resides here when Annex unlocks the Glacial Mammoth Temple for the city. So let's click on that. There we go. We've got a little quest marker. So let's make sure to investigate that. Um, my scoot. Yeah, we'll scoot you that way. I don't know if I need to personally visit it. Oh, we do have a critter over there. You know what? We'll put our scout back to auto explore. And I'll make sure to send my proper army down here. But I was going to say, I don't think there's actually going to be a fight when I was doing the test. When you arrive at the Glacial Mammoth Den, the visage of the Glacial Mammoth that lured you there has disappeared. Yet you suddenly feel cold with it while a massive shadow blankets lands. You examine the enthralling tree and notice that the tree draws in all heat from the air. Loomfrost's influence is palpable here. You recall ancient legends that promise formidable boons to the most ardent torchbearers of Loomfrost. Claim this territory so you can build the Glacial Mammoth Temple, which invokes the power of the Glacial Mammoth to slowly turn your domain into snowy fields. As a reminder, Snowy snow tiles are our preferred terrain type, so this will help turn more things into that, which sounds great. Uh, win Loomfrost's favor by securing at least two Glacial Mammoth dens, and then build the Glacial Mammoth Temple. The Glacial Mammoth is guaranteed to notice your devotion. Alrighty. We will keep that in mind. Thank you very much. 
So we're going to have to go and annex this. Um, I am kind of a fan of spending the... Ooh, that's tough. I was going to say, I am a fan of plant spending the Imperium to accelerate our population growth, but I also do want to make sure to plop down a couple of cities pretty fast this time around, and um, we need 200 Imperium to turn an outpost into a city. Hmm. Do we rush that? I'm working in the storehouse to try to boost our, uh, our, our food a little faster, which seems like a pretty good idea. Yeah, I kind of think we might. All right, one time. So I could move towards this. Um, I mean, I could annex it immediately. I don't know if I have to rush it. I'm actually wondering if maybe it makes sense to annex the forester to do that first. Nah, I don't know. Let's go build the farm here. We'll annex this bad boy up. It is going to give us some extra morale, which seems like a pretty useful thing. So we've got that going on. All right, let's keep exploring and seeing what we can do. But yeah, I'm going to try to resist spending too much more Imperium over here because I definitely want to make sure... Uh -huh to be able to pick up some extra cities ASAP. Construction supplies, don't mind if I do. Ooh, Mage's Tower. I don't think I want to take on a gold ancient wonder currently. We're probably going to have to save that for a little bit longer. All right, only took a couple more turns, but here is the main gist of this particular scenario, the Primal Dispute, unique Pantheon quest. So either defeat or form an alliance with each of our two, uh, let's say, neighbors that we're sharing this realm with. Soon after meeting life goddess Serena, she contacts you. Nature's blessings, she starts, but before she can finish her greeting, she's interrupted by the siren goddess Nimu. Immediately, the two goddesses start bickering. The blessings of nature affinity should be protected, not twisted and devolved, Serena sneers. All who threaten my domain will be exterminated, even mad goddesses like Simu. Simu scoffs. My stormborn will flood your precious forest. Only the strongest survive the tide, and for that you must adapt. Allow me to demonstrate, Serena. You find yourself between two Godir who fight over nature's domain. With whom will you side? So it seems to me like there's no reason not to side with someone because you will get the 300% relationship boost and it's not locking you into anything as far as I can tell. So I'm going to sign with Simu in this case because I think she's going to be a little uh, further away from us so we're less likely to be in conflict. So we've sided with, C with, uh, with Nimu. Now she still doesn't like me a whole bunch. Uh, we did support her view, so we've got the plus 300 over here, but we do have the clashing affinity. So that's why I'm thinking maybe adding in a little bit more nature affinity, despite being perhaps not on theme with what we are doing otherwise, might still be quite useful to help um, cancel this. Uh, my character also started with an evil affinity. Uh, if we put ourselves back over to neutral, we can eliminate this, so it may be worthwhile. I think I'm going to go ahead and send the welcoming gifts, which is also going to be useful. And we'll see what we can do to overall boost our relationship uh, with one another. Because I'd rather not be at war with everyone simultaneously, at least not at first. We did get a natural population growth over here. So probably what we want to do is one of our three tiles here that's got an extra trait. We've got a gold vein, an iron deposit, and another iron deposit over here. They're both great things. I tend to lean probably towards the extra production early. Although we do keep running into some, you know, money issues. Because you need the money to construct. So you kind of want both. Um, in this particular situation, is there anywhere I want to expand to? Well, I think I might be putting an outpost here for another city. So I think what I might do is expand in the opposite direction. Um, do we build a mine? I think we're going to do for a quarry here, just for the raw production. And it's going to double the production benefit, benefit from the iron deposit. Or perhaps we could build a mine and then we get a province that gives us both money and production. Um, we're getting plenty of extra production from the favored terrain as well. Maybe that is the way to do it, actually. Let's go ahead and build the mine. So we're still going to get extra productivity, and then we'll get money to help us support it. And we do have enough for our first Empire skill over here with Shadow. I don't think we're going to be defeating any heroes anytime soon, and I'd rather keep the Imperium to try to make a city. So that is going to be the plan. Do I want to build an outpost right in this tile? It's an interesting question. Annoyingly, there are no resources right here. We've got some Astral Dew there. Okay, so if I were to settle here, it would push out. We have the Verdant Grove. Maybe we don't want to be too close to it. At some point, this Mage's Tower is going to be good. Um, in the, I don't think it's the ideal city placement, necessarily. But the important thing, I think, at this juncture is to get some things started. So we're going to claim this, which is going to upset Serena. That's okay. I don't. We're, we're planning to be an uh, enemy of Serena. So we can go into conflict that way. I don't see an issue whatsoever. I feel like we're in kind of an awkward place of land here. Kind of a tight little area between seas. Uh, we're clearly going to need the ability to embark uh, 
uh, on the waters relatively fast. We're gonna need our basic seafaring here, just because otherwise we're gonna be a little bit stuck. Is that her capital? I wonder how viable it might be to just rush her capital this game. Necrotic magic is done. That's great. Normally, I'm actually quite keen on getting two scout upgrades, but I think in this situation here, I'm gonna focus on things that improve our military as early as possible. So Conjure Primal Mammoth, hard to argue with summons. I like it. Storehouse is done over here in San Home. We do have the boost for the vendor, which wouldn't be a bad idea. We've got money in the bank right now, but more money, more good. Um, Do I rush the town hall or do I wait until we've got population five for the boost? I might wanna wait. Part of me really wants to boost our population one more time. We can build just like, well, we need two foresters, right, for the granary. Oh, right, I can build the uh, Glacial Mammoth Temple. I should really do that. Annex provinces with the Glacial Mammoth Den, which we have one, gets extra mana, and it starts to alter terrain to snow, which is really strong for us. Um, Three turns, it's quite cheap to do. I'm still wondering about normal production boosts. That, I gotta say, the plus five mana is actually gonna represent a fairly decent amount of mana. Dang. I don't know, I'm really partial to maybe getting a granary earlier, just for the... Now, you know what? We're gonna go for our, our theme quest. All right, Necrotic Magic is done. We're gonna start casting that, upgrade our support crews. That's great. We are building some units here, good, yes. I wonder if I should be using some gold to accelerate things a bit more, but we'll leave it be. Oh, yeah, so uh, Wayne hates us over here. We did meet a free city who absolutely detests us, so that's a thing. I wonder how well defended they are. I think we definitely need a little bit more here. It'd be great if we get an early item. Um, oh, these are units of Wayne over here. In her territory. Are you also at war with her, I wonder? Kind of want to send my leader back down here to ideally plant another city before I start anything else. Uh, we built another archer. I'm going to throw you in there. These archers are pretty weak, but that's going to have to be fine. Um, I'm going to immediately go and start building up as a city, please. Oh, you can annex another province. Gorgeous. Well, let's get ourselves at least the one forester. Necrotic magic is ready to go. So I love that you, can, you can't really see the units because the mammoths are huge. Just really gives you a good sense of their size, which is great. All right, so our army stack here has gotten more powerful thanks to the spell. I like that. And yeah, keep moving south. We'll ignore this haunted graveyard for now. Rival, we declared that's fine. In fact, I should probably rival you back. Just to keep that war justification going on. And I'm wondering if I should friendship Nimu here. You're up to indifferent, which isn't bad. Yeah, let's do that. And I'm going to try to keep one person in our good graces for the moment. Oh, Glacial Secrets. There we go. You claimed two Glacial Mammoth Dens and built the Glacial Mammoth Temple. Snowy winds rise, concealing the presence of enormous entity. The Glacial Mammoth looms over you. The cold makes you shiver. The massive size of loom frost makes you feel tiny and insignificant. Through a vibration in the air, you experience her sensations. She has wandered the realms for ages, but now her ancient bones are tired. She longs to rest. She longs to share her secrets. Glacial Mammoth is wary of her treks. Build research posts where Loom Frost may rest and reveal her secrets. Roared Master Hero skill. Nice. We need to build four research posts. I do quite like building research posts early on. You don't want to complete control over where they may show up. Uh, this might be a little dead endy over here. But we'll see. Yep, I like the woodcarver's workshop a lot. Just sort of overall production, which is lovely. How many troops? Oh, we don't actually have any yet. Oh, we got. I took the archer away. Right. So we'll finish the the um the protector. Then I'll probably alternate archer, protector, archer. That's sort of a baseline tier one army. Oh, you friendship me back. How lovely. Okay, so we're still just indifferent, but that's okay. Scoot, scoot, and a boot. Oh, oh, that's another dead end. I was going to say, is there more city up there? I mean, we could do a fairly aquatic city. Another free city. Um, Actually, hold on. I should send a Whispering Stone somewhere. Oh, I want Soul Collection. So this is going to be, yeah, a Sustained World spell, which is going to give us soul's income. 
Uh, it does cost gold for upkeep, which is going to be quite a lot. So we may have to focus on more mines, but getting a soul income would be lovely. Yeah, so we'll pop this for the gold. That's fine. We're going to go over here and look at maybe settlement places. Army, you can settle up in the city. That's going to be fine. And we've got a Conjure, Conjure Primal Mammoth spell. Lovely. Um, right. I was going to say, I already dealt with that, but there we go. So Sojourn has been established. Hero Recruitment. We can increase our cap over here. I feel like we should do that. Oh, the hero cap mechanic has changed. So in the wolf update, the recruitment has been disconnected. Um, in the wolf update, the hero cap is disconnected from cities and is going back to some of the ways they used to do it before. Over the course of the game, your hero cap will increase automatically. Uh, but yeah, we can still play Imperium if we want to raise that manually here a little bit faster, which we will do. And... Right, I guess we, we're not aligned with any city-states or anything like that, so we're basically just going to be grabbing from our pool here. Uh, if you get hit, you teleport, you're frail. Don't love that. Beast trainer, some animal units. Uh-huh. Slick. Unit does not trigger opportunity attacks. Well, that sounds good. What are you... You've got fighting. You can be set up for some melee stuff. Sure! We'll recruit you. That's going to be fine. So... Over in Sojourn here, we'll make sure that you get installed as the governor. And you know what? I will go and make sure, yes, especially claim here. I'm going to go and claim this research post area because we do need to build some. And I don't. I want to make sure to not lose it. We're going to have to go and boop these guys because this area is currently occupied, but that's going to be fine. I'm actually I'm a little bit worried about our defenses over here. Um, I'm still going to start with the storehouse because I do like the population rise. And then we're going to go protector, darter, and then we'll fill that in a bit more. And home can annex another place. Uh, nautical research points. Does that count? I wonder. Let's see. We're at one of four research posts. If I go and annex this, it does count. Well, that's very helpful. We're going to send to war party. Okay. Huh? I've got to go and move my, uh, my main military squad up here. Actually, I might want to... These guys here. And make sure we're accelerating the recruitment. Fortify up. Okay. I might want to buy some more units, too. Ooh, I would love a library. Oh, we do have the town hall boosted. We know we're going to be eating a bunch of gold income for our... Um, for our, our spell that we're going to research. The souls generation. Yeah, so that might be a good idea. Don't have enough to buy another one of you, which is a shame, because I thought it might be a good idea to boost that. New Empire Development Skill. Well, I'm spending my Imperium kind of on other things right now, so I guess you know, we can we can get to all-seeing, but unfortunately I cannot do that currently. I wonder, should I boost... Can I give you a Whispering Stone? I guess I may as well. We're not using it for anything. Man, you're good line. You're not going to like me too much, but I may as well send you the stone. This domain is being invaded. Okay, just don't don't boot my city right away. It was pretty crazy. Perhaps to settle right on the borders with Wayne here, but we need to get some territory. Are you a little stuck? Oh yeah. Um, I guess either way is trespassing, isn't it? I wonder if I should just disband you. As awkwardly stuck. We're not particularly friendly over here. This is Serena's territory. But. I think entering would still require a war, right? Well, it's trespass. Uh, which, you know what? We'll give her more justifications, but that's going to have to be fine. Okay. Huh? You know, why don't you come back up to the surface? Ooh. Yeah, it's a whole new area. We'll move you up here. All right. Park you into the city. Oh, you're causing me some problems over here. Yes, you are. We've got two turns... We will be able to get there. High risk battle. We're, I mean, we're going to be able to reinforce with these units. That's going to have to be okay. Yeah, I'd, I'd really prefer if you didn't pillage this, please. If you don't mind. Um, okay, you can attack now and it will bring this in. This is going to be a risky battle. 
but I'm not sure what else I can do about it. Um, there we go. I can hurry you, so we will get a whole other unit. I guess that's going to have to be good enough. Hmm. Oh, it's because of this other army is going to be pulled in. Uh, okay, that makes sense. What I want to do in this first round of combat, well, technically second round of combat, is I want to target something for Necrotize that uh, we're going to focus fire down so that we can start just converting the enemy into new friends. You over here can also use your disengage. Shoot and then pull back, which is going to be great. We generate some... Oh, almost. Excellent. And then we get some new friends. Lovely. I'm going to mostly play this on auto because I'm incredibly lazy. Uh, I'm hoping you took the disengage action there, Archer. Actually, if you haven't acted already. There we go. Let's make sure to take the disengaging shot, please. Did it Did it not work? Ooh, what did I do? Oh, well, all right. Victory. We did lose an Archer, unfortunately. What is this reward? Sniping Frostbringer. Ooh. Oh. I don't know. Are we going to equip that? We've got this lightning orb, which I do like quite a lot. Um, I think I'll probably end up just saving that for maybe another character in case we need it. We do have a level up on our hero. We're going to focus, I think, into the magic over here. Um, probably just give you some resistance to make you a little bit tankier to start off with. Oh, no, actually, we're definitely going to lean into the lightning evoker here because um, if we do any sea battles, everyone's going to start as uh, with the wet trait on this map and they'll be extra vulnerable to lightning damage. So I think that's going to be a great thing to lean into. That and Frost, which we're already doing a little bit of, which is good. Uh, oh, this is our Scoot. Please Scoot to boot over there. I guess that's all been uh, that's all been discovered. We can't do seafaring. That's why you're stuck on this little island. Although, down here? No, not really. Okay. Uh, new Archer is in place. I would like to maybe create two double stacks here. I'm wondering if two double stacks might be able to hit Wayne and take them on. I don't like leaving Sandholm undefended, but I think we're gonna do a little bit of risk taking here. It doesn't help that our units that are recruitable currently are a little bit, I mean, weak, because they're just mostly tier one stuff. Soul collection research is done. New research started. We'll unlock the Necromancer. That seems like a good idea. Take a quick look at our cities here. I'm wondering if maybe I should be spending my Imperium on population increases here, because as much as I would like that third city to bring us up to the cap right away, I think our units might be a little bit busy. I suppose what I could do with my heroes is I could... Uh, no, that's all sea stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure we're going to have a good opportunity for a third city right now. So, you know what? I'm going to just boost your population here. We're going to go and put some pressure on Verdant Grove. Let's give me a quarry over here, please. Yeah, I don't care that Serena's upset. That don't bother me none. Um, we did actually just kill, annoyingly, a hero in that fight. So I, um, in hindsight, would have liked the knowledge extraction at this point. I think we should probably just get that basic seafaring, though, because I think on this map, it's going to be just too, too, too important. We got ourselves some Astral Dew. Nice. Hero leveled up, but we... Oh, no, Koba is leveled up. Excellent. Koba. So Koba's going to still act as a fighter. Actually, should I make you an archer? You've come in with Great Axe. I could replace it with a Sniping Frostbringer. I do tend to like my heroes to be ranged because it does keep them a lot safer. Yeah, let's do that. Although, you've got Slippery. Um, Slippery is going to matter more if you enter into melee more. On the other hand, as an archer, you might want to be able to move away without triggering attacks of opportunity. You know what? We'll do that. Okay. Perfect, the Slippery Archer. That sounds good. Got some remains here. I think we're just going to sell these remains for the cash injection right now. Thank you very much. And we can create a bounty. So this is something that is new here in the Wolf update. Uh, I believe, let me double check. I'm pretty sure this is part of the free Wolf update. It is, as opposed to the expansion itself. So this is the tool that you can use if you like to diplomatically screw over other players. What you can do is you can create these bounties and offer up money or mana or a combination of both to incentivize other players that you will give them. You basically create your own quest to give other players, uh, I think by default, I think it's 20 turns to go and capture it. And then if they do, they get the reward, but other players will do this as well. And so I can see this being an extremely fun tool in a multiplayer setting to really mess with the status quo of things without you ne necessarily having to risk your own troops directly. I love that. 
Okay, let me... Let me grab the archer out of here and move it sort of vaguely forward then merge up with this army. I'm going to see if there's somewhere... No. There's really not going to be anything to settle. No, we're just going to keep planning, spending our Imperium to claim terrain and limit their potential for stuff. Yeah, we'll just keep boxing in Serena. That's going to be okay. And otherwise, we will work to mount up an army to go and attack Wayne if we can. Yeah, I really think these scouts... I'm thinking about just bringing them home at this point. Huh? Well, we'll see what they can do. All right, we've got that. Should we... I'm going to cancel this because we do have some tier two units we can start training. I'll finish the protector. That's fine. Oh, let's get the library. I do want the tech to be able to advance through the tree, please. And yeah, I'll, I'll spend some Imperium over here. That's going to be A-OK. -okay. Uh, we can get some more research. Ooh, that's ah, that's occupied. But I'll do that one anyway. Yeah, we'll have to go and clear that out. And we can start our soul collection. So this is going to have a 30 gold upkeep, which actually would mean we'd be negative gold with this running. Maybe I can't launch soul collection immediately. Oh, I've been denounced. Yeah, well, deal with it. I, I understand why she'd be so cranky, of course. Like, it's legit. I'm not going to say, hey, AI, why, why are you behaving that way? Like, no, no, I'd, I'd be pretty mad with me, too. I wonder if I can cha uh, challenge Wayne with the current army. Right, I can't do the two tier, the tier two units here in Sojourn. Add in a primal charger, because I don't have one of those in my army yet. I won't send any production, because we kind of need the cash right now. Do I dare move forward here with both these? They're not full armies. Hmm. No, that's, that's way, that's, I mean, we might be able to take it, but maybe we can get ourselves a couple of tier two arm units and then see what we can do. So I'm just going to go and skip your turn here. How long do we need for the primal charger? Four turns. Of course we can accelerate it, but we don't have a ton of cash right now. We'll get cheaper over time. Do I keep spending the Imperium here or do I want to unlock some more abilities first? I think we are going to need some traits. Oh, okay. We finished the Necromancer. That'd be another fun one to build. Oh, and then we can pick another Tome of Magic. So I usually like to filter by available Tomes and then sort by tier. We still need another tier one before we can get the next one. I was thinking that the Tome of Alchemy might be nice. This would give us a nature tick, which should, I think, help our relationship with our neighbor. Um, I mean, we could take something that's got just the pure thing, but... Alchemy, I feel, kind of vibes with some of the necromantic stuff we've been doing. Uh, you know, we can still work on a bunch of, like, poison stuff, some status modification things. Uh, material refinery is kind of cool. So I kind of like this vibe. Now, if we select this, so we're going to get our second the perfect nature affinity. Formula requires an equal measure I don't know that we need an afflictor right now. Yeah, we can drop some afflicting asthma on people. So we'll research that. And then let's take a look at Nemo here. And if we take a look at our relationship, yeah, we no longer have the affinity issues, which is good. Wait, I'm sorry. Did I walk through your territory? Oh, trespassing in another ruler's domain. So you don't like it that I trespass in someone else's domain. Hmm. Still, I mean, we're moving in the right direction, so that's going to have to be okay. If we look here. Yeah, we can build the Necromancer in the front. I can't rush you, but that's going to be fine. I think I still won't queue up a building because I'm going to try to see if we can rush this Necromancer next turn. Meeting Territorial Thunderdale. Oh, hello, Thunderdale. Nice to meet you. Um, what am I looking for here? Three cities. They're actually neutral. Maybe I should move the Whispering Stone there. Where are you located? Oh, you're underground. Okay, I actually, where are you located? Oh, you're evil though. No, I will move it to Thunderdale. I'm gonna withdraw the stone. We're gonna give it here. I'm gonna boost the allegiance as well to start accelerating that. Spending my Imperium like crazy, but so be it. Uh, I'm just gonna park you back in the city and put you on guard for now. And you're just gonna sit here. This, some, this must be someone else's quest, right? 
with a little timer icon. I don't know if there's anything to boop currently. Oh, I could go out to C and maybe boop that pearl reef. Um, yeah, we probably can't take Wayne right away. That might be the best thing to do. Let's, um... Okay, good, you're there. Just wanted to confirm that we did have a leader in that army. Let's send you down here. We do have the seafaring, so we'll be able to do that. This protector, I'm just going to have you skip a turn. That's going to be fine. And, and we'll skip both. Um, now I was going to rush the necromancer. But if I move my army down here, because you're right, even with a couple of necromancers, I don't think we take Wayne. So I think we do go and develop this. The shrine's fine, but also if we get buildings that might give us some cash, that might be the way to go. Do I build the shipyard? That's gold income. Yeah. And then the vendor after that. Sure. Um, yeah. So keep coming down here. Uh huh. And I guess just go to guard for now. I was uh -huh. leaving you not on guard because I wanted to be uh, made aware of when this unit spawned. But I guess we'll wait. Serena's withdrawn to the astral void. Has she really? Things not going so well for you, Serena. Well, well, well. Safe battle? Perfect. I'm just going to go full lazy mode for this one. Right, we're getting hit by lightning. This would be a map that would benefit having lightning resistance on our units. I wonder, with the new book, so there's the new Atoma Stormborn, which is a tier 4 book that includes the major race transformation Naga. I wonder if they have lightning resistance. Um, also... Archer. See, I don't know why these uh, archers that I've got love to run super far forward for some reason, and it's fairly frustrating. Let's get. We're gonna necrotize this guy, and yeah, we'll just make sure to finish you off. There we go, and then we'll get a new pet over here. Or oh, no, <gasps> doesn't work at C. The necrotize doesn't work at C. Oh. That's something I hadn't considered. We don't get our zombie buddies with Necrotize here. Mmm. Okay. It's great on land, though. I mean, the Necrotize still does damage. It just doesn't spawn anywhere. Done and done. All right. And we're sort of going to stupidly lose that archer. Done. And then Sandholm... I'm going to annex this with another research post, which completes our quest again. You've constructed a research post to conserve the knowledge of the glacial mammoth. The trembling earth signals her intimidating presence once more. As before, Snowfall heralds her arrival. The cold barely bothers you. It never bothered me anyway. You sense the warmth of the spirit's thick fur. You strip down to your undergarments and lie next to Loom Frost in the field. Okay. Bliss overcomes you. Okay. After several hours, some of your animists find you thus. You declare, Loom Frost secrets now bolster the Risen Frostlings. For preserving her wisdom forever, she graced me with her power. So Arvik the Dark becomes the avatar of the Glacial Mammoth. We immediately start with five stacks of Fury of the Glacial Mammoth. That's nice. So bonus frost damage and the ability to inflict frozen. We can also choose some mana crystals. We can get some knowledge. So this is about half a half a turn worth of knowledge, which is still something. That's a fair amount of mana. Or, oh, Imperium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, always more Imperium, right? I mean, maybe not always, but frequently. Uh, We should probably boop those guys, although I might want to let this rest one turn before we do. Maybe a couple turns. Just chill there, no pun intended. New research done. Um, Mammoth Primal Communion. Oh, grants non-culture units the Glacial Mammoth Boon. Okay, we don't need that currently. Target-friendly zombie or skeleton unit explodes. That does sound like fun. Oh, a different siege project. This actually might be super relevant for us taking on Wayne at some point. Wayne thinks it's their world. No, sorry, that's terrible. Uh, yes to Vendor, because we do need our gold production going up. Uh, you can annex another province. Um, this is no longer bordering Vernant Grove. 
So I might just end up going south. If I were to pick a random building, like say a library, you would need a forester to boost. Yeah, all right, let's get a forester. Oh, sorry, that's a quarry. Forester right there. Let's get that just to unlock some new boosts. And we've got another level up. Oh, so our character itself doesn't have the Glacial Mammoth's boon where it can generate Rising Fury and then go into Fury of the Glacial Mammoth. Although now that we are the Avatar, we're going to start with five stacks of that. We won't be able to regenerate more after it, but that's okay. Uh, but we, and really, we don't necessarily do that much attacking with our character, so I don't think it matters that much. I really like Distant in Evocation for my magic character here, get the extra range. I'm just way into that. Is it the strongest? I have no idea, but that's certainly what I'm going to do. Oh, we do have a Tier 2 hammer we picked up. I don't want to put that on here, and, I'm, and my other hero's setting up to be an archer, but healthy plate. I may as well. Sure. All right, good. And the soul collection. Yeah, okay, I'm going to get this started now. So we're going to launch that. Defensive gold upkeep, but we are going to generate free souls. Trade a wizard's bond with Nemo. Sure, that's a deal. So there you go. So our political situation is looking pretty good. We've got a fairly decent friend being developed with Nemu, which is important. I mean, they're still listing it as indifferent. If we do one thing that might boost our, um, yeah, it wouldn't take much, just 10 to swing us to neutral. I think that would help a lot for maybe developing a alliance with Nemu. Now, in push comes to shove, the important thing here is for us to not start a war with Nemu right now while we might be focused on Serena. Whether or not we, we go and ultimately do an alliance with Nemu or we turn around and deal with her more aggressively after we're done with Serena, that remains to be seen. In any case, I'm gonna wrap up the video here. Um, as a reminder, thank you very much to Paradox for sponsoring this video. That is very much appreciated. Uh, check the description box down below for more information on Primal Fury, the new content pack coming out, which introduces the Lupine and Goatkin form. It adds the new Primal culture that we've been playing with over here. Two new tomes, the Tome of the Fey Mists, which is really based on generating um, defen defensive misty terrain that grants concealment and stuff on the map. I think that one's tier two. And then the tier four Tome of the Stormborn, which I am um, seriously considering. Uh, am I going to be able to see it real quick? I probably went through it. Let's sort by name. I think it's right at the very bottom. Yeah, this Naga form, is there any chance you're immune to electrified and lightning resistance? See, this actually seems really valuable in this map because all those water fights mean that we're going to be constantly getting shocked. Okay, that is quite good. Uh, we've got the new Storm Wreath Isle Realm, which is what we're playing on here, which involves the battle between Serena and Nemu. And there are four new ready-made rulers uh, with either life or death affinities. Uh, though, again, you can make your own custom rulers perfectly fine, but we're clearly playing one of the death-aligned ones over here. And the free wolf update adds new form traits, an expanded pantheon, uh, the reworking of necromancy, which we didn't properly showcase over here, although if I'm really smart, I've done sort of a, um, a, a video overlay uh to show the have the post battle screen that gives you the ability to recruit some new troops um the new bounty system which we did see uh they overhauled the hero equipment and the free cities and a bunch of quality of life improvements across the game uh hopefully there'll be a link it, it, again check the link down below for more information there might be a link about the uh, the patch highlights as well which is going to be good i'm recording this uh, quite ahead of the release of the expansion and the update. So uh, things may change between the version I'm playing and the version that finally gets into your hands. And there also might be some extra information that's been released between now and then. So uh, hopefully you, you keep yourself informed and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.